this presentation, I point out the surgical anatomy of the aortic valve and root, with its implication for valve repair and root surgery. The aortic root is a complex region of the heart. It is normally considered the centerpiece of the heart. It is positioned immediately above the left ventricle as a bridge between the left ventricle and the ascending aorta. From its inner and outer phase, the aortic root has a relationship with all cardiac chambers, the left ventricle, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the right atrium. The aortic root encompasses the aortic valve, gives us insertion to the base of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, and give origin to the coronary arteries. Besides its main anatomical function, it plays a role in the physiology of the aortic leaflet interacting with the sinuses of Valsalva and regulating the blood flow dynamics during the entire cardiac cycle. In the daily clinical practice, the aortic cannulus has more than one definition. In case of aortic valve replacement, surgeons commonly consider the aortic cannulus as the place where the cusp are attached to the aortic wall and anatomically exemplify the division between the left ventricle and the sinus of Valsalva. On the other hand, the virtual basal ring, constructed by joining together the nadir of each leaflet in a, circular, in a circular shape, is considered as aortic cannulus by cardiologists or radiologists, mostly when providing measurements of the diameter of the aortic cannulus. Despite these simple and practical definitions have been widely accepted, the aortic cannulus is anatomically much more complex. It is characterized by the clear three-dimensional morphology. A Korean colleague identified the aortic cannulus as a functional unit, introducing the concept of the functional aortic annulus. It is composed by the sinotubre junction, the semilunar attachment of the aortic leaflet, and the virtual line joining together the natil of each leaflet with the respective inner leaflet triangle, namely the virtual basal ring. In this way, the aortic cannulus could be considered the skeleton of the aortic root. The basal attachment of the aortic leaflet describes three semilunar lines with a characteristic crown-like fashion. These semilunar lines represent the hemodynamic boundary line between the left ventricular outflow tract and the arterial system. Every single semilunar line has an idea the overlap left ventricular outflow tract in its most distal portion and at zenith the rise and join the sinotubular junction and they represent its upper attachment. This hemodynamic annulus represented by the attachment of the leaflet simply different from the anatomically boundary line between the left ventricular outer tract and the arterial system. This anatomically boundary is in fact represented by the ventricular aortic junction that is the anatomical connection where the left ventricular outer tract joint the aortic tissues are described in the following slides. The sinotubular junction joins upwards the tubular portion of the aorta and downward the sinus of Valsalva and the aortic commissure, with which is in direct continuity. On the aortic lumen, the sinotubular junction usually represents a slightly raised ridge or thickened aortic wall, while on the outside it is smooth and usually is identifiable after a dissection of the upper part of the aortic root. The sinotubular juncture is not perfectly circular, and the evidence a mildly trifold or scalloped outline. The sinotubular junction play a fundamental role in the structure of the aortic root and in the function of the aortic valve being a component of the functional aortic annulus. It has specific geometrical relationship with the other component of the root. In fact, Despite the area of the sinotubular junction increases with age and with hypertensive cardiomyopathy, in normally healthy hearts 
Echocardiography diameter of the sinotube junction is about 75% of the maximal sinus diameter, while it's larger than the aortic annulus at the level of the virtual basal ring with a ratio of 1.3, as is evidenced by the line in the figures. A mismatch in this ratio between the sinotubal junction and virtual basal ring is a frequent cause of aortic regurgitation. The ventricular aortic junction represents a real anatomical site where ventricular structure like the muscular septum, membranous septum, mitral aortic curtain join the arterial system. It is positioned into the wall of the aorta. Schematically, it is represented by an almost circular line constructed joining the base of the interleaved triangle with the lower third of the sinus of Valsalva, slightly above the nadir of the aortic leaflet, crossing several points the similar line of the aortic leaflet. From the histological point of view, the thickness of ventricular arterial junction is variable along the aortic root circumference as the presence of muscular inclusion thickens the repetitive portion of the root. In fact, the left right commissure and the right coronary sinus are significantly thick, thicker with the maximum thickness at the level of the right coronary sinus of 4 to 5 mm. On, in the rest of the circumference, the muscular inclusion of the left ventricle gives way to the membranous septum and mitral aortic curtain with a mean thickness lower than 1 mm. For these reasons, the overall mean thickness of the root is about 3 mm. The ventricular aortic junction is characterized by particular differences for each sinus. In fact, the three leaflets have different relationship with the ventricular muscle, the mitral aortic junction, and the membrane septum. Left ventricular fibers embody the aortic root wall with muscle inclusion at the level of the right coronary sinus, left-right commissure, and a part of the left coronary sinus toward the right sinus. The right non-coronary commissure takes relationships with the membrane septum, while the non-coronary sinus and the non-left coronary commissure have relationship with the mitral aortic curtain. The virtual basal ring represents a virtual circular line positioned inside the left ventricle outflow tract, running through the nadir of the aortic leaflet and the respective interleaflet triangles. It takes anatomical connection with the interventricular muscle septum, the membrane septum, and the anterior mitral leaflet, but it is no more than a virtual plane, simply created connecting together the nadirs of the leaflet without a real anatomical counterpart. Despite it has been considered a circular line, recently its elliptical shape has been well described with in vivo CT scan studies. It followed, therefore, that the measured diameter of the ring will vary if measured along its major or minor diameter. Bisecting the off-center cuts represent well-identifiable lines mainly used for accurate measure of the root at the level of the sinus of Valsalva, but are also utilized for accurate measurement of the aortic canals. In fact, because the virtual basal ring is elliptical, measuring the virtual basal ring diameter using the bisecting cut has been proved more accurate, while of sender cut resulted better suited to measure the sinuses of Valsalva. Different from the right ventricle, with this freestanding infundibulum, where muscular fibers are found at the base of each pulmonary sinuses, the aortic basal ring runs across non-uniform component. It is fibrous tissue in the case of mitral aortic curtain and membranous septum, or muscular under the right cusp. The hypothesis is that these different types of tissues influence the elliptical shape of the aortic virtual basal ring, as observed in CT scan studies appear suggestive. The normal aortic valve is composed of three leaflets that represent the moving part of the valve. They have a wrinkly surface facing the aorta and a smoother surface facing the ventricle. 
Each leaflet is composed of free margin that is slightly thicker than the basal portion and participate to valve closing during the diastole. The opposition dome, the so-called lunulate, are on the ventricular surface below the free margins and represent the place where each leaflet meets the adjacent leaflets during aortic valve closure. At the mid portion of the lunule, there is a further thickening called the nodule of Arantius. Recognition of this anatomical path, lunule and nodule of Arantius, is important to understand the physiopathology of valve regurgitation and the possibility of surgical repair. In fact, aortic regurgitation is mainly caused by the lack of opposition of these structures that can be caused either by tissue retraction or by enlargement of the skeleton of the root, mainly at the level of the anus and or sinotubal junction. The basal margin of the leaflets is attached in a semilunar fashion to the aortic root. This basal attachment at the nadir below the ventricular arterial junction and the zenith at the level of the sinotubal junction, where each leaflet joins the adjacent leaflet form the three commissure respectively. For this reason, the crown-like line of attachment of the leaflet divides the aortic root in subvalvular and supravalvular regions. The supravalvular region, albeit containing ventricular cell at the level of the ventricular arterial junction, is an aortic portion, while the subvalvular region, albeit containing aortic fibrillastic cell, namely the interleaflet triangle, is a ventricular portion. The total area of the leaflet is about 40% greater than that of the aortic root, with the largest area measured in the non-coronary leaflet and the most smallest one to the left coronary leaflet in the majority of cases. This observation is fundamental to understand the importance of aortic valve coaptation and the importance of the right proportion between overall root area and cusp surface. Underneath the apex of the commissure, between the respective leaflet, there is a thin la layer of fibrous tissue in the shape of triangle with this base toward the ventricular arterial junction that form the final part of the LVOT. These thinner areas of fibrous wall are described as the interleaflet triangles. Furthermore, the interleaflet triangles separate the inside of the left ventricle from the extra cardiac space. The three dimensional spaces of the aortic root surrounding the aortic leaflet are known as the sinuses of Valsalva. The sinus of Valsalva represent the most proximal portion of the arterial system above the aortic valve. In a cross sectional view, the three bulges have a clover shape, and due to its morphology, characterized by a dilatation, the root is much wider at the midpoint of the sinuses than at either the sinotubular junction or the basal attachment of the leaflet. Although the sinus of Valsalva could be schematized as having a pear like symmetrical shape, its real morphology is more complex, with several peculiarities and a slight asymmetrical shape. It is well known that the internal height and volume for each sinus could be different. The left coronary sinus has been systematically found to be the smallest sinus, while the right coronary sinus was found to be similar to the non-coronary sinus that in many cases appear to be the tallest and largest one. The aortic root followed the natural curvature of the entire ascending aorta, and the presence of the tilt angle of 5.5 to 11% degree between the virtual basal ring and the sinotubular junction planes have been widely observed. Analyze every single anatomical structure along the circumferential plane is of paramount importance when dissecting the root from its surrounding. The external wall of the right coronary sinus and the commissure between the right and left coronary sinus take close anatomical relationship with the right ventricle and the dissection should include the right ventricular mass of the need to be separated from the aortic wall until the plane of dissection reach the inviolable external boundary line represented by the ventricular arterial junction. As we have seen, at this level, 
the ventricular arterial junction and the virtual basal ring are placed at different height. In fact, the virtual basal ring is placed at the nadir of the leaflet, while the ventricular arterial junction comes above this plane. Sutures pass at the left of the virtual basal ring from the internal face of the root toward the external face, normally used to place an annual plastic ring or to hold the graft in a reimplantation procedure, allows an effective annular stabilization despite this difference in height. Alternatively, part of the right ventricular wall needs to be dissected in order to go further down at the left of the virtual basal ring. But the relatively thickness of the wall, meaning the distance between the inner and outer point, will be increased. The external wall of the left coronary sinus, the commissures between the left and the non-coronary sinus, and the, of the non-coronary sinus takes anatomical relationship with the roof of the left atrium. The separation of the soft connective tissue between the left atrial muscle and the aortic root allows a easier dissection down to the level of the virtual basal ring. In fact, at this level, the ventricular aortic junction lacks of ventricular fibers and coincides with the virtual basal ring. The commissure between the right and the non-coronary sinus take relationship with the right atrium. At this level, the ventricular arterial junction is represented by the membranes interventricular septum and the insertion of the tricuspid valve septal leaflet forms here an inviolable boundary line of the ventricular arterial junction. The internal root height is usually higher than the respective external height. In fact, the internal height is measured from the virtual basal ring to the sinotubular junction while the external root height is measured from the ventricular arterial junction to the sinotubular junction. In this setting, the non-planar nature of the ventricular arterial junction significantly affects these measurements. The external root height is significantly shorter on the side of the right coronary sinus compared to the non-coronary sinus, the left coronary sinus. In fact, the pressure of muscular inclusion place the ventricular arterial junction farther from the virtual basal ring and nearer to the sinotubular junction at this level, while the absence of muscular inclusion make the ventricular arterial junction closer to the virtual basal ring at the level of the left coronary sinus and non-coronary sinus, so minimize the difference between the internal and external height. Despite this observation, as we done in human cadaver studies, in our experience, we have observed that they also at the left of the right coronary sinus and of the commissures between the left and right sinus, a deeper root dissection of the external face of the root is still possible in order to reach the left of the virtual basal ring, despite the presence of muscular portion of the ventricular septum. The virtual plane between the ventricular arterial junction and the right ventricular muscle, in most of the case, can be gently dissected it is possible without grossly entering the muscle or fiber of the left ventricle. In our experience, the presence of the ventricular arterial junction does not prevent to reach the level of the virtual basal ring where the annuloplasty ring or a dacron graft need to be positioned. However, sometimes, because of the tissue thickness due to the presence of muscle, the external circumference of the virtual basal ring will be significantly larger than the internal circumference of the virtual basal ring. This aspect needs to be considered when choosing the size of the external ring or bed needed to perform an annuloplasty. Given these discrepancies in tissue thickness, the size of the ring may vary. However, irrespective of the ring size used, the amount of annular reduction should be verified by locking the annuloplasty band or ring around the negadilator of known diameter. Usually, we use a 21 to 22 millimeter for a normal adult. We thank all of you for your kind attention.